Welcome to another episode of Meredith with a Y. I am your host, Meredith Willits, and today we have on the beautiful, the amazing, the talented girl herself, Magic Words, with author and actress Tracy Maine. So stay with us. Hello, everyone. This is Meredith with a Y, and I am your host, Meredith Willits. Today we are going to go deep, changing lives, and I am giving you the keys to the castle. So, Trace, thank you so much for being here today. Of course. Happy to be here. So excited. This... So Tracy has been a friend of mine here in the town that I live in for, um, you know, five to seven years now. And we are on a boy mom text chain, which has brought us through COVID and all of the things with laughter and tears and support for each other. We're all moms of boys, but she is also an author, an actress, and a, a mom's choice award winner, um, she's in SAG. I mean, this woman, I mean, blessed to be uh, have her on my podcast today. So Tracy, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. And you just made me sound so exciting. So I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just bumping myself up that I actually get to be <laughs> friends with someone as cool as you, who's oh, yeah. like, you've made television shows, like, and this woman is the nicest, kindest, most thoughtful, friendly, laughing person on the planet. So like, I'm so, so honored to have you as a friend. To you, because I appreciate it, but same to you. And always making us laugh. Oh God, you're so funny. So I have to tell you, and I haven't told you this yet. Yes. But my mom is a college um, educator. She also awesome. teaches nine through 12 English um, at school right now. So she wow. has been an English educator um, for God, 57 years. Oh my goodness. That's a long and time Good for her. She's blown away by your books. Really? I love blown it. Blown away. You know what? Blown you know away. what Meredith? Because I, I let you finish, but I feel like the books, I know they're um, children's books, but I always say that they're, you know, for children of all ages, right? Yeah. So for, for older kids, for young adults, for, you know, adults, I mean, they're really magic words that can help anybody. So if she is blown away, I really appreciate it. And I hope she's sharing it maybe even with her students. That would be awesome. Yeah. And so, you know, like every time I go, like would, would go to a relative's house who has young children and was traveling like to Ohio, you know, I would, you, or you came out with a new book, like you're my first go-to, like, cause you have, and we're going to talk about, you have the book, but then you have the little stuffed animal character that goes with it. Like, it's so cute. And, um, I'd be like, all right, load me up. Let's like, get all the books. Like, let's take them to the relatives and um, so so they're there. They're at my yeah. um, niece and nephew's house. And she was reading them to them one night. And she's just like, they are the most profound children's books. And I mean, I'm talking like a almost 60 year educator here yeah. of, of children of all ages and reading books and assigning books. So she is well read. And um, just what um, amazing words. So Tell the listeners and watchers a little bit about where this came from, because this was all born in 2015. Am I right? Um, Well, I think the concept, yes. I mean, there were years of me creating this book and using my kids. um, Well, I had this idea and it stems back from being a child. So if we're backtracking, um, I grew up in a family, there are five kids. And it was a lovely childhood. And every day before my siblings and I would go to school, my dad would stop us before heading out to the bus. And he would say, okay, repeat after me. Mm. I can and I will and I am the greatest. And he wouldn't let us leave until we'd say it and then we'd go on our way. And this was just like a routine of ours. And those words stayed with me my entire life. And now as a mom, when my kids were much younger, I started doing the same thing. And so before they jump out of the car, I'd be like, okay, repeat after me. I can't, I will, and I am the greatest. And they, they'd run off or before their sporting event. And so um, I just felt like there were such important words because they helped me in my entire life, like through different things, those words would come to me 
um, and help me overcome, you know, different obstacles. And I always had this creative background. So I know we didn't get into it yet, but obviously I pursued acting and all through my acting career, I, I wrote, I did tons of writing and the writings would take, um, chapter of like what was happening in my life. Right. So when I was pursuing acting, um, in California, I wrote like a self-help book and it was about, uh, the title was love affair with the dream. So you can imagine I was pursuing, I was going to tons of auditions for soap operas. So yeah. here I am with this whole, you know, vision. And I wrote a book, you know, love affair with a dream. I also wrote a screenplay. And so different stages of my life, I was writing different things. So now here I am as a mom and I'm sharing this wonderful message with them. And I always had this creative background and I was like, you know what? I really want to create a children's book because I find this so powerful and I really want to create this tool to get in the hands of every parent, every teacher, every caregiver, because they really are magical, wonderful words. And so, um, it just took a couple years for me to create the actual story that I wanted to tell. Um, and then I just felt like I had the need. I didn't want to just sit back and think about it. I really wanted to, to do it and just get it out there. So yeah. made it happen. It's so amazing when you were just talking about your dad standing there with you kids, it's like, and he wouldn't let you leave until you said it. That's so powerful because there are so many days that we cannot get those words out of our mouth. And I am very sure that there were some days when you didn't feel those words. You sure. felt less than or negative or sad or, you know, like maybe you got a bad test grade or maybe your morning didn't go. But he sat there and said, you know, basically his messaging was no matter what's going on, that is still the truth. And yeah. you should own that truth. And I will stand here and hold space with you until you can muster the energy to speak and own that truth before you head out into the world today. That's what I just saw in my yeah. head yes. for all of that. Because yes. there are so many days when we don't feel in love with ourselves or good enough. And to muster those words are very powerful. I always tell people from, you know, your mouth to God's ears, like you need to hear this from your own mouth you know, how powerful it is and the way that you speak to yourself. And I talk about this yeah. all the time on the podcast yeah. is how you speak to yourself yeah. is incredibly powerful. And just so everyone out there knows who doesn't know Tracy, her kids are awesome. Her son, Luke, like I could just like, he can move in tomorrow because he's such a wise guy and I love him so much. He's so droll. He's so funny. He's a trip. And um, a you've character. raised a character 101. Um <laughs> <laughs> and so like you have wonderful kids and the fact that you understand and took what worked for you, because as, as some of us know, as I'm sure everyone can imagine okay. when you are in Hollywood, oh, yeah. when you are in acting, Correct. everything tells you you're not good enough. Every oh, no, can, every, yes. everything. So speak to I that. Mean, like, I would sit, yeah, I would sit in the, so Back in the day when I was really pursuing it, my, my young 20s, yes, I would sit in those waiting rooms, you know, with these gorgeous, you know, actresses all going for the same part. And it was, yeah, it was very easy to be like, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I, I'm not talented enough. You know, right? In those moments, just like our kids are in school when they're trying out yeah. for something or they're, they're taking a test and these negative thoughts come in, right? But those words, my dad's words, right? They come to me like, hey, stop, right? That's just the first thing is stop. Don't let those negative words come. And you say, I can do this. And you yeah. basically, it's facing your fears and doing it. Just doing yeah. it. Because if you give up and you don't do it, well, I mean, you have, you know, this great story to tell, right? In your life. Everyone has a, a life and a purpose and a great story to tell. And if you just... You know, because you're afraid or you don't think you're good enough, you know, you can't allow those feelings and those things to creep in. It's okay to sit there for a moment with them, like you're saying, but you can rise above it. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I've always, like, everyone has fear. Yes. Everyone. You right. would be inhuman if you didn't have fear. Actually, they're studying someone that there's actually a person on this planet right now who has zero fear. And they're studying this person as to why they have no fear, like of anything. 
it must be something like that they're missing in their brain of survival. But Good point. Yeah. we all have this incredible amount of fear. But what you're talking about is the courage to get past that. When yeah. does that courage and that those words and your inner monologue show up to say yes and Correct. allow you to grow versus your ego jumping in and saying, no, stay home, be small. That's where it's safe. Just keep your pajamas on today. Don't try out for that today. Like, it's right. okay. You stay home with mom. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but right. think how many people and kids, you know, have parents that um, will say to them, as we've heard a million times, right? Um, there's no money in being an artist. You'll never make the basketball team. Hello, Michael Jordan, right? Like mm -hmm. there's so many parents that are also just like the brain trying to keep their kids safe from ha having the wild dream of being an actress, being an artist, being a um, whatever the thing is that seems outlandish. That's like the ego that says, hey, you know, keep it safe. Yeah, right. And so and, and so back to the books. Exactly. And I feel like the books, let's grab one, I'll grab one is such a wonderful tool because you want to teach your kids young. That's the whole point, yep. right? I was taught young. You want to teach, like, it's such a great tool to teach them young. Yes, you can learn these tools or these words later in life, absolutely. But if you can teach them when they're young, it's going to serve them great. And I always say, uh, Meredith, that, you know, the words that you speak, they're either going to help someone, right? Yeah. Heal someone, or they can hurt someone or hinder someone. So the words that you speak to your children are so important. You know, you really be careful of the choices we use yeah. with our children. Sometimes things slip out, right? But if we can always be careful and vigilant and, and positive in what we teach our children, because I'll tell you, when they're away from you, when they're in school, when they're facing a difficult moment, when they're at recess trying to make a friend, when they're at, you know, taking a hard test, your words will come back to them yep, and they will either words. help them rise above and do amazing things or, or our words can really hurt. So, yeah. um, you know, I created the one book, uh, which was Johnny's mommy's magic words. I can, and I will, and I am the greatest. And it follows Johnny giraffe throughout his school day. And when he thinks he can't do something, his mom's words come to him, right. In those oh, moments. And he I overcomes amazing obstacles. Um, and it's really cute. It follows Johnny throughout, you know, his school day. And then in the end, you see Johnny grown up and Johnny has five kids. So in my family, I have five kids. And so, you know, my dad's name was John. So it's just kind of, um, no, no. you know, the last page is kind of funny because you see five little giraffes and I'm the little one he's holding in this story. So Aww. really it's like his message that I um, also wanted to pass on because I love, I love my dad. He's awesome. And, um, you know, there's one way for me to get back to. She's and he was a talent. I mean, he's, he comes from a creative background as well. Like Absolutely. he understands the word. No, he understands grit and endurance and trying mm -hmm. and sticking with it. If you want to talk about him for a second. Sure. I mean, he's a lifelong educator. I mean, he's mm -hmm. still working. He's 82 and he's still, he's in the hair industry. He loves what he does. He's passionate. He helps stylists, you know, believe in themselves and go out and, and, have careers for themselves. And he started first, um, you know, in his own salon. And then he decided to branch off and have beauty schools, hair salons, hair product. Um, so he's done a lot um, in his life. And, and as his daughter, I was able to watch him, you know, do tons of classes and, and motivate and educate. And um, that's probably part of my, you know, yeah. little motivational background, just listening to him. Totally. And I mean, just everything that you're doing, um, you know, not only is it inspiring and it's going to help tons of kids because there are so many kids, so many kids who were not raised with your dad and Correct. who will stay small, who will listen to the voice in their head, otherwise known as their parents, who will listen to society that says, not you, you're not good enough, pretty enough, smart enough. Um, I just did a post on this yesterday on Instagram yeah. and there is all that messaging out in the world that we compare ourselves. You know, we're always comparing ourselves to the others. And so it's, it's kind of like your own little superpower to have these words in your head 
that you that you can call on when you need them, you know, and reprogram if you don't have those parents. So like as a like I mean my brother and sister it's, I bought the books because I love the books and I love you and I love them. But like there's a lot of kids in your life that don't have the positive messaging that these books can help. This makes yeah. a great gift for children to read themselves and PS if a parent does decide to read that this book to their child it's they can hear it too because most people that don't talk kindly to their children or are maybe judgy or um you know uh play it safe with their kids that's their messaging in their head so there's a lot of parents that need this book whilst <laughs> reading it to their children right that's you what know I'm what saying. i mean children like, of all ages yeah right it's, everyone's learning from it absolutely I mean, they're great gifts just for classrooms. Just, you know, get it into the classrooms of your child. Yeah. Um, I donated them to pretty much all of my kids' classrooms. <laughs> the mm -hmm. library of your school. Um, so they can check it out or the, your public library. So just even getting it into those hands, just, um, you know, it's, it's huge. So huge. then, um, yeah. yeah so talk, talk about all the books because all you have like a place, whole... Right? Yeah, yes. whole thing. So the first book, obviously, Johnny's Mommy's Magic Words. I honestly, like, I didn't know if I was going to really publish any more children's books. I felt like that was just the one I had. Um, and then I went to... Um, and Dad's uh, like, nope, we're going to go full I throttle know. with this one. To, She's willing. Exactly. I went to this conference, and all of a sudden, I started having visions of writing more. And on my plane ride home... Um, I wrote this book. So this one literally took in, like a couple hours. So this book just came instantly. It's so fun. It's called Bitty Squitty's Magic Words. Um, I am brave and can conquer any wave. So those are the magic words. I am brave and can conquer any wave. And it follows Bitty Squitty, who's the, the smallest squid of his family. And for the first time, his mom says, okay, Bitty Squitty, you have to go catch dinner for the family. And he's like, who, me? I, you know, he's so scared. Um, and she's like, yes, you. So for the first time, he had to leave the comfort of his coral reef and go catch dinner. And he faced his worst predators like a shark, a seahorse. Um, and anyway, he said the man, his mom gave him the magic words. He said the magic words. He, you know, went by him. He got the food, came back home and the whole family, you know, cheered for him and they ate dinner and um, his worst predators became his friends. So, Aww. you know, it's a cute little story. So you know what I'm was... thinking in, in that one, Trace, is I think a lot of parents parent from fear. I mean, look at that. Orange is my favorite. <laughs> I love orange. My friends. Like, my kids go to school and I just hang out with my friends. <laughs> you just hang out with your buddies back home. <laughs> um, coffee and my friends. Your coffee and your friends. But yeah, I think there's a lot of parents that parent from fear. And reading that book helps parents to realize they're not doing their kids any favors by keeping them at home and protected like when my kids were little we'd be at chick-fil-a i'd be like all right go get a to-go bag go get a to-go lid go ask for some sauce or go get yourself a water and talk to the waiter and waitress like learning yeah. how to do things for themselves at a very young age that just because they're short doesn't mean that they can't do things yes and i think a lot of parents parent from a space of fear and your book it doesn't just teach the child, I can do big things, even though I'm little. It also teaches a parent, like, it's super important to let your children be self-actualized and find their courage in this sure. world, because they're going to have to eventually. You're not going to be here forever. Right. So I think that's that's a great and book for that, both. That book is also cute, like, for the, the high school graduate going off to college, you know, yeah. that's another, like, a cute little gift. Um, that is a great those. gift. Right. And so, then the, the last what, one that I wrote was um, Haley Unicorn's Magic Words. I am special, one of a kind and born to shine. So um, it's a cute book about Haley Unicorn who's born amidst the horses. And so she wants to keep hiding, you know, mm. her horn and her mom, you know, tells her, no, you're beautiful. These are the words. I'm special, one of, one of a kind, born to shine. So she makes um, an unlikely friend, uh, Blaze the Dragon, who's also experiencing the same thing he's he's born amidst the dinosaurs and he blows fire and everyone's afraid of him so they become friends and then they reveal their you know unique specialness and in the end you know like everyone bows down 
to Haley when she, you know, is comfortable to show them. So it's just a, a real, just being comfortable with who you are and, and you're, you're born with a purpose. You're born to shine. So I love that. And this came out like right when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> so there's I that. Like, I released this book and it was like, hey, COVID's here. And right. you know, all of my author visits were like, you know, on halt. Kabosh. So. And so I know for me, whenever I got a book, for my nieces and nephews, I got, um, I also purchased the stuffed animal to go with it just because, sure. duh. Um, so are those still available? Okay, good Where question. are we at with those right now? Because I know I just Perfect. saw you in an event and you had small, cute ones too. Yes. So I do different things, you know, with different events and what I'm asked to do. But um, I work with a lovely company, Noah's Ark Animal Workshop, and they actually promoted the book and they made all the plush animals. And it was awesome because they got um, the books and the plush into, you know, hundreds of schools across the country. Um, and it was it was awesome how we did that. So it was more of like a promotion when we kicked off the book that we were um, doing these events. So currently, you know, we sold out of all of the animals. So um I'm working on uh, what's next with, with the plush, but yes, I do have little plush that go with them when I do, um, you know, local events stuff. or whatever. So, yeah. And so you, um, so I know that there, I, I just saw that there's a lot of, cause like my sister, I know she would, she has a children's book living inside of her. Um, yes. how was that process? Cause I, I, I am having a lot of women on this series <laughs> that are entrepreneurs, who have been either moms or like one career and then pivoted to another. So like, what was the process of, you know, becoming a children's book author? What was that like? What was it know. like? Okay. Yeah. So just to quickly backtrack and, and let you know again. So pursuing the acting career, I always, my outlet was writing. I love to write. I took tons of again? creative writing and um, playwriting classes. And so I pretend, I mean, I laugh with my kids, but I, I truly do have like a treasure trove box upstairs of, I was telling you, Love Affair with a Dream and Hope's Book. And oh, well, that was my screenplay um, <laughs> and all different things. And I just felt like I needed, well, this one, I really just needed to get it out there. Right. I needed to get my children's book out there. So, was, um, so I, I, you know, researched uh, different ways and obviously I did do the, I went with a literary, you know, I was, should I go with a literary agent? Should I go with a major, you know, publishing house? So I was doing all of that, but it was taking a while and I was getting impatient. I was like, I need, if I need to get this book out. Like I want to be in control of this. I want to get this yeah. book out. So I researched other ways on self-publishing, hybrid publishing, and in the meantime, waiting to hear back from other publishers. So I ended up going with uh, mascot publishing um, they were, they were great. And, um, I was able to actually find my own illustrator. Yeah. Um, your illustrations are insane. Like that is one thing. Colorful. The colors yeah. and just the, you know, the, it's just next level. I mean, it is like movie, you know, cartoon worthy. I mean, you could do an entire cartoon uh, yeah, I mean, it's just amazeball. Yeah, and that was it. So I knew that I also wanted to come out with some plush. Mm -hmm. And so the illustrator, um, he, he's worked with some bigger companies that actually have um, plush that go with them. So I knew that we were going to be able to create some super cute stuffed yeah. animals from our stories. But yeah, I, I interviewed a bunch of different um, illustrators. And, and this was Justo Barrero. He's awesome. He's from Spain. So that's like, hence all the colors and artistic Ugh. yeah so that was fun anyway so yeah I chose mascot and um like I said they've been wonderful and that was the route that I chose to take and was this when you wrote the book was this like back of the napkin was do you have a oh, journal something back in the napkin actually well I so my younger one Luke as you know he was really him and his friends <laughs> I would so take them to I you know in the carpool like boys, listen, <laughs> tell me, tell me what you think of this story. And I would just ramble off, you know, every day and every night. And, you know, they would start chanting the magic words. So really, yes, back in the napkin, but also carpool, you know, carpool. carpool. <laughs> yeah. I owe it to the carpool kids. <laughs> you, like, you had your, what do they call yeah. that when you like take a, you know, a, a sandwich and then you have your yeah. like whole board decide if it's a exactly. good sandwich for like a fast food company. 
that was your 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 test test subjects i trap them in the car and i go like super long ways and i'd be like okay let's try this out and if <laughs> they laugh i'd be like that made it in there so like there's a chocolate cake uh in johnny's mommy's magic words you know we threw that line in there and they laughed i was like okay chocolate we'll cake. that one <laughs> oh my gosh that is hysterical i love that so much and you have a website tracy main it's t-r-a-c-i-e which, just so you know, I'm not changing that in my phone because I have T R A C Y in my phone. Okay. And, right. And I, Listen, Meredith might be similar. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're I E and I'm Y, and they're both wrong in our phones. Yes. But that's yes. just living in We're infamy. We're first friends. That's how we did it. Yes. That's how it works. When you first meet each other, you know how you meet each other and you put it in the phone, and then you're not really Tracy Main. You're Tracy Main Luke's mom. For sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. All the kids' names. You have the kid's name, so you know yeah. when you get that text, you're like, all right, whose kid am I letting over Absolutely. when you're just getting to know the other moms? Yes. But yeah, it's like, um, it, it's it's been just like so awesome getting to know you and these books are insane and they're just, I, I, I when you were sitting there showing me for whatever reason, the last book, I just kept seeing in my head like cartoons. Like, why isn't this a cartoon? Animation. It could be. It could like, be. It's such good characters. I have so many other books. So like I said, the, you know, I have, I don't know, five to 10 other children's books, same series, yeah. different characters. It's just, who knows when the next one will come out, right? I, I feel like I need to focus on these three. But I want to show you something funny, Mer Meredith, and you might yes. laugh real quick. No, um, okay. I found this. So do you want to see my very first book I wrote? Yes, I do. We, you might have one of these at home too. Really? My Friend Chipmunk. Oh, my stop Friend it. Chipmunk. You it's wrote not, that? It's, um, I'm not going to read it, but it's just funny to see it. I think this was like second or third grade that I, that I wrote that story. And, oh. um, and let me just say that the actual plot, I mean, the climax of the story makes me laugh because I basically meet this chipmunk on the street and I bring him home. Like, who meets a chipmunk on the street? Like, well, why isn't clearly. it a dog or a cat? I front chipmunk. Because you're Tracy, that's home, why. I bring it home and I ask my mom to keep it and basically she says no. And then it follows me home like a cat. Follows right. me home like a cat. And then in the end, we lived happily ever after. <laughs> I mean, I say, I say you self-published that. You know what it reminded me of is um, the uh, cover of uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Like, <laughs> oh, right. you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of no, doodled different. and drawn. Like, I think that that would be a big hit. We'll just need to publish it and see if it, it yeah. takes off. Watch that take off more than anything else. Tip so one's we'll magic words. I don't know. Think yeah. about it. I love that so much. Yeah. And, you know, just so everyone knows, this woman is in SAG. She gets to, like, screen stuff. Like, she's and, – yeah. and and we're all, like, wanting her to get back into it because you're just looking, so talented. I, I've been a member for, oh, like, more than 25 years. Is that crazy? I was just looking crazy. back and doing the crazy. math. Yeah. A long time. And I'm just so, pushing I, – I'm saying get back in because – You never know. You never know. I mean, and they're always filming stuff in Chicago. They're doing the bear downtown it's right booming. now. It's booming. booming. It's so different. Honestly, when I was pounding the pavements and trying to get business back in my young 20s. Yes, it, there's so much more work right now. Um, and the best thing is it is all ages. So, yep. you know, you I can't age out of this career. Yeah, so, I mean, yes, it's not I like... Might. It's not like the 80s where they want everyone the same age. Like, if you watch any movie, TV, anything... You have the gamut of every age, every, you know, like physical ability, every, everything. They're like, they're not letting 20 year olds play 40 year olds anymore. They're not letting, you know, like they're calling in all of the people. And now they're not just filming in LA anymore. They're filming right. in Chicago. They're filming right. in Hinsdale. They're filming in all of these places. It's not what it used to be. So. And right back when I was pursuing it, there was. There was no real show here. I mean, yeah. there wasn't. So there's now a it's, now. What's the other one that they do? Um, Chicago Fire is is here. 
Bear yes. is filmed here. Like, there's a lot. So, guess what? Yes, maybe. I Meredith, need a very famous Meredith, friend. Meredith, let's go. <laughs> I'll do it. Let's Sign do me it. up. We'll let's carpool. <laughs> we'll carpool. You know me. I'm not afraid of any lights. I'm in it. I don't. I have no idea what I'm doing, and I've never taken a class, but I will put myself you're, out you're there. You're a natural. You're in. Don't worry. I love it you're so in. much. I Tracy, can and I will, and I am. Great. I can, I will, we're and gonna I'm going to do the damn thing. I appreciate you being here so much. I know, um, you know, this whole thing is just the beginning for you. I love the fact that you have more books ready in your brain and ready to go to inspire more kids and more parents because the parents are reading the books and they're the ones that also need it. All of us Gen Xers and stuff that didn't have those types of positive um, words growing up. We need those now so that people like me in our fifties that are recreating ourselves, we need those words, you know, like we, I need that programming. So thank you so much for being a light to the world, to children, to parents, um, that there, there is language. Language is important. Messaging is important. It will change the trajectory of your children's lives. If you know of a library or a school or a child, or a woman's shelter, or um, an orphanage, anywhere that you know that children or parents or communities um, could use this type of messaging, please reach out to Tracy at Tracy, T-R-A-C-I-E, main, M-A-I-N, dot com. I will have all of that in the show notes. Um, please reach out to her, and she will get together a box, a package, um, and organize with the company to where um, that needs to go and, you know, the, the pricing and all of that good stuff. If you know someone that is an underserved person who um, could really use one of these books and can't afford to purchase one themselves or you can't afford to purchase that for them, um, let Tracy know and she will get one out to you. Um, and so she does give back 100%. But like, yeah, if you can just spread the word, this messaging for children and parents is um, is so important. And I thank you so much for writing these books and putting yourself out there and listening to your words and your dad's words and tell your dad, I said, thank you, because without him, there would not be you. And without you, there would not be these books. And so thanks, dad, for um, that messaging to his kids, because it's look, look how this changes the world. This is the way the world changes is by messaging and kids and your proof in the pudding. So thank you so much. Thank you. thank you so much for having me. I love you. Thank you. Love you, dear. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. Okay, stay I'll, on for a I'll minute. All right. All right. Love. Thanks for listening. If you would like to connect on a more personal level, head over to MeredithWillets.com or on Instagram at Meredith with a Y for behind the scene footage and outtakes. Please subscribe and come back each week for more Meredith with a Y. Thanks again for listening. Cheers.